for the days when you don't know how to live for yourself, tell yourself to live for something else. I once told myself to stay alive just one more day so I could pet my dog just once more. Live for the times where you were laughing so hard, the rivers down your face were, for once, happy. Live for the moment when before you hang up the phone, your best friend says I love you. Live for the times you could live for yourself. Live for the memories you have yet to make. Live for the memories you have already made. Live for your cat, turtle, brother, sister, mom, or dad, whoever you may need in that moment. Live for the time your phone lights up and reminds you that you're not alone. Live for one more cup of water ice in the summer. And live for one more snowball fight amongst friends. Live for the drunken nights where all you remember is dancing and singing like no one was around. Live for me, or her, or him. You find one thing to help you keep fighting, and you hold on to it as tight and as long as you can. Most importantly, don't ever give up. It's giving me anxiety. My name is Emily Luck. I am 22 years old. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I struggle with I guess a mood disorder? <laughs> I don't know what to say there because I've been diagnosed with so many things. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, might have borderline personality disorder, might have bipolar disorder, definitely have a mood disorder. Yeah. I'm fucking nutty. I started to notice Emily struggling in high school. I don't know what the struggle was that led up to it, but it was when she wrote her suicide note. And obviously we found it and it was read right out loud as a family and I think that was the biggest struggle for all of us because no one realized that she was really that sick. The hardest thing about my mental illness is that my mood is so rapidly changing. So one minute I can be extremely happy, I feel like I can do anything and everything and then one small thing will go wrong and I just feel like I'm worthless or like it would be better if I wasn't here. Um, there's never just one constant, like, I can never just be okay. It's either I'm really high or I'm really low, and that's really hard for me and the people around me to deal with. At one visit to a hospital when she got really sick, there was, like, a young punk doctor, and he was all full of himself, and he said to me, you have to, you have to parent her in the moment. You have to react to her reactions in the moment. And I thought he was an asshole at that point. But as she started to grow and as we started to go through everything, um, he was right. Like with her emotions, sometimes it's so off the hook at one point and then the same thing doesn't bother her the next day. So you truly do have to parent in the moment with her. In high school, I ended up overdosing on a bunch of pills and had to go to the ER and I spent time in a hospital. So that was very hard. Um, I don't think there's just one contributing factor that has made my mental illness harder. I think that life itself is just very hard to deal with and with a mental illness it's definitely a lot harder. I have an extreme fear of abandonment um, so I tend to push people away and then I'll pull them back in and I'll push them away again. Um, I have lost friends because of my mental illness. I am definitely very hard to deal with, but I have also made a lot of friends that are capable of dealing with the intensity of my illness, and I'm thankful for them because they are a part of my support system. So, The turning point in my life was definitely when I went away to college. Um, before college, I felt like I didn't need help, I felt like I could do everything on my own, but then I went to college and I realized that this is not something that I can do alone. I didn't really have a healthy male role model growing up, so he definitely stepped up to the plate for that. Um, we lived with him for a little while, he would constantly tell me that I was okay. Um, he would always call me to ask how I was doing. One time I told him, you know, what if I marry a girl? And he said, oh, so you're a dyke? And we just both started laughing. <laughs> and um, he was like, no, honey, like as long as you're happy, I'm happy. So like he was always my 
biggest supporter. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I have this thing in my head that I should be over it, but when you lose somebody who's that important, it's very hard to just get over it. I think me staying was worth it. You know, she's my best friend. I love her to death. I really do. Me and Em's relationship, it was something special. It was different. And I just, I don't think that throwing her aside would have benefited our relationship, her relationship, my life, her life, none of it. I don't think it would have done any good. Um, I still would have worried, and I know she still would worry about me too. So I don't think that just tossing her out of my life would have been the best way to go about that. Pretty much she's just like my rock and my best friend, and I don't think I could ever get rid of her. Not on something that's so complicated, yet so simple at the same time. Um, she's getting better, and that's all that matters, because I know the real her that I know is in there no matter what. I don't have one proper diagnosis, but I've definitely made a lot of steps in recovery. I'm not 100% better, but I am working every day to get myself to a stable place in my life. I see therapists, psychiatrists. Um, I don't self-medicate anymore. I've definitely made some positive steps. So I'm proud of myself. <laughs>